This video has been produced using Chrome Perfect version 8.0.4. Some features may not be supported in earlier versions, and the processes described may be different in future versions of Chrome Perfect. Peak Identification The process of peak identification is straightforward. The governing calibration file contains a list of components, each of which has a specified expected retention time and a specified window width. Together, these determine the position and size of the search window for that component. If one or more peaks lie within the search window, then the peak that is closest to the center of the window, not necessarily the largest peak, is identified as the component. Identification is a one-to-one -one relationship. No component may be identified with more than one peak, and no peak may be identified with more than one component. This essentially simple process becomes complicated when search windows overlap. Consider what happens when search windows overlap and a peak is tentatively assigned to more than one component. These conflicts must be resolved. Each component gets only one chance to find a peak. If a peak is tentatively assigned to more than one component, then the component that loses that peak will have no peak at all assigned to it, even if there was another peak under that window. The following chromatogram illustrates this problem. The search windows are located at 0.75 and 0.9 minutes. The peak at 0.81 minutes is the centermost peak for both windows, but it was assigned to the first window because that is the closer of the two. The peak at 1.00 minutes is not identified, even though it is under the second window. If the first peak were to elute earlier, say at 0.79 minutes, then the second peak would be identified. These problems cause erratic behavior because the result depends on slight differences in retention time and on the presence of other peaks. There are a couple of ways that Chrome Perfect can address these problems. Multi-peak search windows. No component may be identified with more than one peak. However, it is frequently of interest to consider all the peaks under a search window and not only the centermost of these, the identified peak. In addition to calculating amounts for each identified peak in the chromatogram, the integration algorithm also calculates, for each component, the sum of the responses, either areas or heights, of all peaks that lie within the search window. This sum is the window response for the component. Next, using the component's calibration curve, the integration algorithm calculates the window amount for the component. Furthermore, if in the calibration file, the quantization type of a component is set to multi-peak area or height, then two things happen. First, calibration updates use all the peaks that lie under the window to determine the response for that component. Second, peak tables in formatted reports can list single peak and multi-peak amounts and responses in a single column. These values are not reported in standard reports, but may appear in formatted reports. Here also, complications arise when search windows overlap. If two windows overlap and a peak lies under both windows, then that peak will contribute to both components' window response and window amount. Therefore, the total of the window responses may be more than the total response of all peaks. Chrome Perfect solves this problem using nested search windows. This feature was suggested by several customers in the petroleum industry who wish to quantify a single peak that lies among several other peaks, which are to be quantified together. A typical example is the problem of the hexanes or C6 plus fraction. Several hexane and higher alkane isomers elute in a group. 
These are normally not resolved into individual components, but are converted to an area sum. Then an amount is calculated with a common response factor. If this was the end of the story, then this calculation could be performed with a multi-peak window. But the same region also contains peaks due to aromatic components. These must not contribute to the C6 plus fraction. Instead, they must be reported individually using their own response factors. These problems have been addressed in a coherent fashion. Two changes have been made in the peak identification algorithm regarding overlapping search windows. The first change affects peak identification. When search windows overlap and a peak lies under both windows, the peak will be identified not with the closest component as before, but with the component whose window width is least. The second change affects the window response. When search windows overlap and a peak lies under both windows, the peak will not contribute to both components' window responses as before, but to the window response of only one component. This may be the narrower or the wider window, depending on the settings in the calibration file. When assigning peaks to search windows, the components are arranged in order of their search window widths, narrowest first. Each component gets to mark the peaks that lie within its search window. A component with a multi-peak window marks all of the peaks that lie within its search window. A component with a normal single-peak window marks only its identified peak. Any other peaks within the search window are left marked as they are. Components respect previous marks. Since the smaller windows get to go first, their marks will not be overwritten by later, wider windows. Therefore, peaks wind up under the narrowest window that may legitimately claim them. An example. The calibration file that was used in this example has four components. As seen in the column on the right, quantization is by area. Two components have ordinary single-peak windows, and two have multi-peak windows. The third component, C6+, has a window wide enough to cover the windows of the other three components. The following illustration shows this calibration file applied to a chromatogram. We wish to report an amount for all peaks under the C6 plus window, based on the sum of the peak areas and using a response factor suitable for alkanes. We also wish to exclude several peaks from this multi-peak window, benzene, toluene, and the three xylenes. Furthermore, we wish to report amounts for these aromatic components using individual response factors. The three xylenes will be reported as a single component. Here, in a nutshell, is how the peaks get sorted out. The benzene and toluene windows are the smallest, so they go first. These are normal single-peak windows, so they mark their identified peak only. The xylenes window goes next. It is a multi-peak window, so it marks all peaks within its search window, the three peaks between 7.76 and 9.15 minutes. The C6 plus window is the largest, so it goes last. It too is a multi-peak window, so it examines all peaks within its search window, every peak between 1.64 and 12.40 minutes. It marks all peaks that are not already marked by earlier, smaller windows. Therefore, in the end, the three narrow windows have their peaks, and the wider window has caught all the peaks not already accounted for. Let's look at how this is reported. The standard report has a peak table that lists all peaks, much like the following. This table is not appropriate for multi-peak reports because it gives no indication of multi-peak relationships. A more suitable report will have a peak table listing all components and reporting both the area and the window area. A custom report must be defined to for this purpose. For the first two components, benzene and toluene, the area and the window area are identical to one another and to the peak areas shown in the previous table. This is expected behavior for all nested single peak search windows where only one peak is involved. For the last two components, C6 plus and xylenes, the area is less than the window area. 
This is expected behavior for non-nested single-peak search windows and for any multi-peak search window when more than one peak is involved. The area column shows the area of the centermost peaks. The values are identical to the peak areas shown in the previous table. The window area column shows the sum of the areas of all peaks that are legitimately under the window. In the case of xylenes, this includes peaks 17 through 19. In the case of C6+, this includes peaks 6 through 25, except for peak 7, benzene, peak 12, toluene, and peak 17 through 19, xylenes. The use of nested windows and conditional responses may raise further questions which are not covered in this video due to their complexity. In the description below, there will be a link to a document which reviews this in some depth. Chrome Perfect users can also review the section of the manual titled Peak Identification in the Integration Theory 2 section. Thank you for watching.